Today, I'm going to show you how I create and manage form elements in Sketch. In this video, I'll show you how I create different states of one form element and how I complete overrides in the inspector panel. Let's get started. If you're new to Sketch and haven't used it much before, I recommend watching an intro video first. This video is a little bit more complex, so I recommend watching an introductory video into Sketch before diving into this one. So getting started with this project, I am creating an application's onboarding flow. So the first screen right here shows the landing page of the application, and here is the account creation page. In this application, first there will be a landing page which has the logo and some information about the app, and then the user would begin with creating an account. So on this account creation page, I've already kind of started to lay out the fundamentals. So there'll be some kind of header here, a back button, and then certain fields that the user would have to fill out, including their name, email, and a password. Right now, these form fields are very basic and they're only showing one state, which is the filled in state. But there are several other conditions we have to design for. Currently, I have each form field as its own separate element. So the name field, the email field, and the password field are all separate fields and all separate layers in the panel on the side. What I wanna do is help create consistency within this application. And the best way to do it is through making symbols. So this is an element that I'm repeating throughout. So I would wanna create it into a symbol. So that way I know it's the same kind of styling throughout the whole application. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take the line, the filled in information and the label of it, put it in a group by holding Command G and then Command R for renaming the group. And I'm going to call this form. Then I'm going to make it into a symbol. So I'm going to create a symbol and I'll just call it form for now. And as you can see, when I turned it into a form, now I have the ability to complete overrides. So I can replace the word John with John email.com for instance, and it would change the information here. So once something becomes a symbol, then I can complete overrides for it. But the default value for this is John because that's what I had originally. So I can delete it and click enter, and then it would return back to John. So to help with consistency throughout the application, I'm actually going to delete these other fields and just duplicate the symbol throughout. So I'm using the same element throughout. And here I'm going to rename this email and fill in the credentials. So with this application, we have to create the different states of the form fields because there's not only ever going to be this one form field state. You can't just give this off to development and assume they would know what the other states should look like unless we provide it for them. So we need to create all the other states. We need an empty state and an error state. I'm going to click into the symbol. So now I'm going to duplicate the symbol by holding down option and dragging and then renaming this one inactive, as in the inactive state of the form. So before the user even clicks on it, what should it look like? I would want this text to contain some empty information to kind of guide the user as to what information belongs in this field. So I'm going to change the styling of this quite a bit. So I'm going to, instead of making it so dark, I'm going to make it much lighter and gray. And I'm going to create a new textile and call it body and active. Then I'm going to make another one called form error for when there's potentially an error state. For this one, I might want to expand the box to contain some kind of error messaging beneath it as to why there is an error. So now I go back to my original page. Here is the same initial setup. This is if email creation is filled. So I might write here email creation filled. So the developer would know that this is the state if everything was filled in properly. But what happens when someone initially lands on it? Initially, when they land on it, it'll be the empty state. So first I'm going to duplicate that artboard and then call it empty. Then I'm going to take these symbols of this information and swap it from form to form inactive to show the inactive state. If we zoom in, we notice that the com of this is cut off and that's because on the symbol level, I didn't extend the text field long enough. So I'm just going to do that and then go back and then see that it's completely filled in. In addition, if the information on this page is not filled out, that means that this button would not be active. So I'm going to take this button and reduce the color of it quite a bit. So that way it indicates that it's in the inactive state. 
So now we have the inactive state of the form, the active state of the form, and now we're going to show an error state. So here I'm going to write account creation error. So this is as if someone does not submit a password with enough characters or an email that perhaps is not valid. So I'm going to take this symbol again and switch it to error. So now this looks a little bit odd. It's because when you swap symbols, it takes up the same amount of space. But if you recall, we increased the size of that error symbol. So I'm going to go back in here and click on the symbol. So the height is 66. So when I go back, I know that the height of this symbol needs to be 66. We have the same issue as before with the text field getting cut off. So I'm going back and expanding it and returning and now it fits perfectly. Again, if there's an error, the user would not be able to continue. So I'm going to copy this inactive state of the button and paste it there. So now we have a complete way to show the different states of the forms for development. If I go back to the symbols page, I see I have all the forms here, so I can clearly swap out of them or switch them if necessary. So I hope you enjoyed this video going over how I create and manage forms in Sketch. Please let me know if you have any questions about this topic and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.